Hey, today we're going to do a Q&A, and Kim's going to read the question just a little bit. And um, I'm Mitch. And I'm Kim at Keeping the Vows. Where we're all about helping people to discover and maintain a Christ-like marriage. Um, so uh, read the questions to us, Kim. It's actually two questions. We're going to try and answer it as one. We're doing something a little different right now. Um, we haven't really spent time looking at this. Kim Sin, you're doing what? <laughs> what I want to do is I want to interview Kim, and I want to get her opinion. And uh, I just think this is going to come off kind of good. So we're going to give this a try. I think we're going to go on the fly with this is what we're really saying. All right. <laughs> Which is, is my niche and is not Kim's. But that's all right. Absolutely. That's all right. She's cute. That's all right. <clears throat> okay. So the first question says, what does the phrase dying to yourself mean? And the second one that goes right along with it says, when a couple is in the thickness of doing life, raising young kids, what are practical ways to show selfless love or dying to oneself on a day-to-day -day basis? Wow. That's good. That's good. So we love to do the questions and answers because it keeps us relevant. If you guys pop us questions and we get to answer them, then we know that we're hitting where we're supposed to. Kim, what does it mean to you day by day to die to yourself? What does it mean? So when I think of dying to myself, um, I think about crucifying selfishness. That's another video and vlog that we've done. It means that I need to um, think about more than just myself and just getting my own way. I need to consider the thoughts and feelings of Mitch and look, try to look at things from his perspective. As a Christian, what makes you want to go that direction? Uh, because I want to please Christ. You know, if I read something in the Bible and it tells me this is the way I'm supposed to behave, sometimes I may not like it, but I do want to become more Christ-like, so then um, I pray and ask Him to help me. That's like if I have a habit I need to change. Sometimes I'm not even aware of it, so you start out saying, God, would you bring it to my attention when I'm doing this? And then you're going to start catching yourself and... So what I hear you saying is that your faith affects your will. Absolutely. So if we have a faith that does not affect our will, it's probably not any faith at all. What do we find out? What's the result when we do this kind of thing? Um, it brings you closer to God and closer to each other, and there's more harmony in the home. <laughs> Which is exactly what we're after in this whole thing, right? Yeah. So we give up our life for Christ we actually gain. If we want to salvage my rights and my will, then we actually lose. I guess some things that I do day by day is if I get up and I see the bed needs to be made, I make it. Um, we have a dog now, a puppy, and we clean up after him in the yard. And if I get a chance, I try to clean it up so she doesn't have to. By the same token, if she gets a chance, she tries to clean it up so I don't have to. When you get the milk out and there, or the water out of the fridge and there's not enough to really put back in there, you know, you, you go ahead and throw it away. You don't make somebody else do it. You know, or you refill the water, you know, whatever it takes. When, you, when, you, when I, these things that I do, when, when I put something in the trash and it's anywhere near full, I take and seal the bag, uh, take it out of the trash and put a new bag in the trash can. It's little things like that. I also try to find things that Kim likes, Kim, things that sh just radiate her. Kim's a great housekeeper, and in 37 years, I've never complained about it. If she sees a cobweb, she'll let me know. <laughs> if I see one, I'll let her know. You know, we'll, we work together, stuff like that. But the one thing that Kim does not like to do in housekeeping is clean the stovetop. Mm. She just doesn't like it. So when I get a chance, like if she's gone especially, she'll be at Bible Study Fellowship or somewhere. And if she's gone, I'll take. And I, I mean, I'm not professional. I clean as good as a man can, <laughs> all right? But I will take all the things out. We have a gas stove. I take all the cast iron things off the top, and I clean it all real good. And then I'll put a post note on it that says, you are loved. And when she comes home, that speaks louder to her than, than probably anything mm -hmm. um, to do that. Uh, so little things to die to yourself. Um, things like that. Also, in the five love languages, which is a thing that we're, we're going to do a video on very shortly here. And... Learn what language it is that your spouse speaks. Learn what it is that fills their love tank. So, for instance, if, if buying gifts doesn't fill my love tank, there's no reason to buy gifts for me because it really wouldn't do anything, okay? But if acts of service, if she wants to rub my back, that's great. Kim's the best back scratcher ever. She's just fantastic. So um, I think in heaven we're going to be able to reach our own backs. But that's, I, have, uh, I have several theories like that, but that's, that's, another, that's another video. 
Um, anyway, so let's read through that. Read it one more time. Uh, what does the phrase dying to yourself mean? And what are when a couple is in the thickness of doing life, raising your kids, what are practical ways to show your selfless love or dying to oneself on a day-to-day -day basis? I think those are good things that we said. I think uh, don't ever forget uh, to make the husband, if, if the wife won't, stick your feet in, in the ground and anchor up and say we're going to have a date night because that's that's important. We've always had a date night, and it's always taught our kids the, the importance of dating. Um, and our kids now that are married date, and I think that's wonderful. We watch the grandkids so they can date. Sometimes I'll actually give them money when they're going and say, have a good time, you know, just to let them know that I believe and encourage them in what they do. Anything you can think of, you say, oh, this, this is something maybe I wouldn't be natural for me to do, but I want to do this because I care about them. That's good. Anything else? Uh, the one thing I can think about, which I mentioned this, I don't know, another blog or video, like when our kids were young, um, I, went, I do want to have a clean house, so that was important to me, but then I came to realize that Mitch would rather have me lay down with the kids and be rested so that I had the time and energy for him. And also men like to have the house cleaned up when they come home. They don't want to be tripping over toys, so before he comes home, I try to get the house picked up, have the kids pick up the house, and... Um, you know, comb my hair, or make sure I wasn't wearing something with food on it, whatever, just trying to look nice for him. So, I don't know. That's just a couple You're things. so sweet. I want to I give the women a gift, uh, and this is something that I, I, I've recited this to Kim so many times. You know, I've never complained about housekeeping. I personally think she's a great housekeeper. If people come in, I think they think she's a great housekeeper. Uh, Kim's mom always said to the grandkids, you can, you can write your name on the dust on the end tables, just don't write the date so that people know <laughs> when you did it, you know. But Kim used to be a little bit absorbed about cleaning her house, and I thought it was more important that she was a mom. And so this is what I learned, and I told her, cleaning and scrubbing can wait till tomorrow. For children grow up, we've learned to our sorrow. So quiet down cobwebs, dust go to sleep. I'm rocking my baby, and babies don't keep. It's more important than a clean house, than a perfect house, than an orderly house, okay? Think of things that you can do that might be a stretch. What is it I could do that would be a stretch for me that I don't really, not really that good at, but I'll do it? I clean, uh, clean up after meals. And I'll clean a dish. And maybe I'll clean a knife and put it away. I'll say, it's as clean as a man can get it. And she'll say, good enough for me, you know. <laughs> but do things that even maybe stretch you. What is it that you could do that would be a stretch for you, but you know it would be a service to your spouse? I think that's probably what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Uh, first one off the fly like this. This was kind of fun for us. Uh, check out our blog at keepingthevows.com. Usually what's here is, is there too. And uh, comment, ask questions. Uh, it's how we get, stay relevant as we answer these questions. If you would, if you like it, hit the like or hit the subscribe button. We sure appreciate it. And we hope you have a great day. God bless.